Well, hello everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. I'm really happy you're here today. We have a webinar, a center court webinar, that will focus on the MBA program in New York City at Baruch, uh, the Zicklin School. And we have representing that school two terrific people, Helene Korn, the executive director of the program, and we have a current student who must be a glutton for punishment because she has a full-time job at Morgan Stanley in wealth management while doing the full-time MBA program at Baruch. She's in her last semester and will graduate shortly. Um, but I can't wait to hear about how she's balancing all these different balls that she has in the air. Her name is Shamika Gupte. So welcome to both of you. Uh, Helene, let's start with you. Just give me the basics of the MBA program. Uh, you know, one thing that I think about when I think about Baruch and the MBA program, I think about social mobility. You know, there are a lot of uh, colleges and universities that offer any kind of number of MBAs, but Baruch has done a particularly good job mm. at moving people up the social economic ladder. Uh, and that cannot be said of many programs. Absolutely. I think that's uh, one of our highlights. Uh, we're a public business school in the heart of New York City. Um, we offer uh, uh, an excellent education, high quality education for good value. So our tuition compared to many private institutions is going to be much more affordable for many of our students. So that allows them to graduate into great jobs with not the same levels of debt that they might have had they um, gone to other private institutions where the tuition is much higher. Um, so we pride ourselves on uh, innovation and tradition with the two words that our former uh, Dean, Fen Lacus, who just recently retired at the end of 2022, uh, used to talk about. Um, that's really what the school represents. We've been here for over a hundred years. I just celebrated our centennial a few years ago. Um, and so tradition is really important, but we, at the same time, we want to stay on the cutting edge, providing, uh, as I said, a high quality education at a good value. And I would bet that many of your students are like me, first generation college students and graduates. Am I right? Definitely. I mean, probably even more so at the undergraduate level, but many of our graduate business students as well, they are, they're the first ones to get graduate degrees. They come from a wide variety of industries, some that you might expect, but like Shamika talks about, you know, working in financial services. Um, I'm not sure if she did that before or not. Um, yes. But many of our uh, our students do come from that area, come from advertising, come from tech companies. But they, we also have waiters and bartenders and musicians who decide that they want to uh, uh, get a business education, and they can come here too and learn how to thrive. And now, explain explain to me like the structure of the program, the format of it, because one of the unique aspects of this is that in the second year you can take your classes in the evening, right? That's right. So we start out with a cohort program uh, in a relatively traditional format with students taking classes during the day, uh, all together as the cohort. Um, uh, some of the what we call foundational skills classes, the required classes, core classes that uh, you might hear called at, at some programs. And the students take all of those classes together. Uh, as I said, during the day, Monday to Thursday, uh, nine to noon, and then they can start adding evening classes to their schedule where they might um, have other evening MBA students in their classes, uh, MS, uh, specialized master's students in their classes, as well as they move on to additional levels. They move to the mid-afternoon in the second semester, um, and so they have time to start looking uh, for internships. Um, taking some classes in the evening at that time too. During the summer is when many of our students will pursue internships. And very often they turn into full-time uh, roles that they want to continue into the fall. So we ship them to uh, an evening schedule for classes in their second year so that they can continue working and getting experience out in the real world. And this is a small and intimate program. The size of your incoming cohorts are what? Um, between 30 to 50, roughly, is, is what we're dealing with. So you know, everyone, some, some years it goes up, other. some years it goes down. Everyone gets to know each other really Absolutely. well. Absolutely. They, they get really to get to know each other well. 
That's that's terrific. Uh, so Shamika, tell us how you decided, number one, that you wanted an MBA, mm-hmm. and then give us your thought process in choosing uh, the Baruch program. Of course. Uh, so um, I'll give a little bit of background about myself. So I, complete my, I completed my engineering um, uh, in 2015. Uh, back in India, and post that, I was campus recruited with TCS. And um, after that, I worked for six years in their financial services uh, domain uh, as a team lead, and then transitioning into a project manager slowly. And that perspective of, you know, interacting with the stakeholders, managing a team, leadership, being the face of uh, the team, and being the barrier of uh, just taking all the decisions and everything and just strategizing every challenge that comes through. That was, I think, the uh, leading point to uh, the idea of pursuing an MBA. And as a result, I started um, looking for colleges in New York City because this was my dream city to uh, get an MBA from. Uh, So that's the reason I started looking up for um, uh, planning to do an MBA. Had you lived in New York before or not? No, I just came in August of 2021. Wow, Um, that's uh, remarkable. What was that like coming to New York City uh, from India? Oh, wonderful. It um, not only does this country give um, another perspective to the thought process, but uh, just having the thought of leading your life on your own, doing everything on your own, in a totally different country is something that was phenomenal. It was a experience, it was a little scary experience at first because, you know, we're not used to um, doing everything on our own and, you know, just looking after everything, like just like doing groceries to bills and everything in, back in India because we stay with our parents. So that was a bit scary, but I would say that's the reason of adding a lot of perspective transformation to our personality as a um, whole so this con- this the city is filled with dreams and i brought some dreams in my uh thought and eyes too and i think they're getting fulfilled that's that's great i bet you your parents were worried about you when you left india to go to new york city were they yes they were a bit worried because i was on my own over here uh so yes they were a bit but they were confident too <laughs> to send me across because they knew I was going for a great purpose and um, I would do a really good job. So, yes. So tell us a little bit about what your learning experience has been like at Peru. Yeah, sure. Um, so the first year, as a uh, professor said, was uh, more of a cohort experience. I would say the first semester was we were all together as a cohort where we had a lot of, you know, group activities and we had a lot of individual activities. So it was a group experience versus an individual experience as well. So um, the first semester was great. The second semester, we slowly transferred transformed into um, a, a being in a setup of the cohort as well as taking classes with the MS students. You know, that brought another experience altogether as interacting with other um, uh, the, the, the other courses and the other people of the other streams, the other concentrations. So that was great as well. And and then now in the second, uh, second year, I would say it's more like also having a job experience, people are looking for jobs, internships, a lot of them are already into um, doing their internships, and then also managing your school schedule. So, you know, you learn a lot, a lot of perspectives, a lot of discussions about how each one of us manage their times, how's the workload, how's the school load. So, yeah, it's been a great experience, but um, it's been juggling between the two. So, I think it's been a great experience so far at Baruch. Great. Now, I mentioned earlier that you are working full-time at Morgan Stanley. Yes. Completing a full-time program at Baruch for your MBA. Yes. Um, how in the world do you do that? <laughs> so you know, I know have... Morgan Stanley is a very demanding employer. <laughs> uh, of course, yes, it is. And um, I think um, the first uh, aspect to this, I would say, is a really, really strong time management, I would say. I think um, I started, um, I start my day 
um, at around 8.39 at work. I leave from work by 5, 5.30 and I start class at six o'clock. I think another very important aspect I would say I got lucky with probably, or maybe I made it very clear at first when I got into the job that I was a full-time student and I have some commitments towards school too. So my classes start at six o'clock. So, and I would say that I am very grateful that I got a manager. My uh, executive director is um, flexible enough. She understands the importance of my degree. She understands the importance why I am here. So she has given me the leverage that, you know, if there is school at six, then you can leave at five, even if, and when there is work required, I just do it over the weekends and that's my flexibility for them. So it totally is upon how you do your time management. Some days are really stressful with work, with school, there are deadlines, there are, there are strong deadlines for school. With the MBA program, it's very challenging because um, it's not just about doing your um, assignments, it's about uh, getting great GPA, getting great grades and also learning from that. We have a ton of case studies to do. So it's all about learning and putting your thought process. It's just not, okay, this is the course, this is what to do and this is done. It's not like that. It's, it's, you have to think about what's to be put on the paper. So I think it's totally about the time management and just concentrating on um, how you want to get these two balanced. So I think that's how I did it. It was uh, difficult at first, but I would say I sailed through successfully. And how, how did the MBA program, the early part of it, prepare you for that job at Morgan Stanley and set you up for it? <clears throat> of course, yeah. Um, I would say that uh, there are great uh, organizations there uh, in, in, the, uh, in the college. Also, I would say there are academic advisors who are being assigned to each one of us. Um, and the best part over here is there are a number of academic advisors. There are a few that are assigned to us specifically, but Baruch has get, get, given us the opportunity, the GCMC has given us the opportunity to interact with any one of the advisors. Just block them on your calendar, take a date and time, and then just get in touch, whoever. There are certain advisors who are really great at their job. They have great industry experience. You know, I come from a financial services um, domain. I'm looking forward to, I was looking forward to, you know, a target the finance uh, industry from an analytics point of view. So I got in touch with similar likewise advisors who could guide me through that. So that was a great opportunity where GCMC gave us the leverage to connect to a number of uh, advisors. And then comes the networking part. I think Baruch is really close-knit and very connected to its alumni. They have um, their alumni coming in to meet uh, the students. There are certain events where, you know, you just get to meet the alumni, understand, and they're working at great companies. So that also brings a perspective. You understand how they worked it to how they sailed through, what their experiences were. So I think there were a number of opportunities that Borough gave where you could put your hand and legs all together. So it, it was all about grabbing the right opportunity and using the best out of it, I would say. Now, Helene, how common uh, is Shamika's story? Are there many students who actually end up in their second year uh, doing full-time jobs and going to school in the evening? It's, it's not uncommon at all. I mean, uh, one of the aspects of our program we pride ourselves on is that it's very relevant that you what you learn in the classroom, you know, in the evening, you can go into work and use on the job the next day. So, you know, where, where, we're, sent, where we're located, um, there are tons of opportunities. So, you know, so many different industries that and companies that surround us, you know, we're in... Um, the Gramercy Park area of New York, so just below Midtown, just above the financial district, um, all different trains that connect here. You can walk a few blocks and be at the headquarters of lots of different firms. And many of our alumni are working in those firms, as Shamika mentioned. So they're coming onto campus, uh, interacting with our students, doing panels uh, about th their experiences in different uh, segments, different industries, and what their jobs are. 
So there's really a ton of opportunity. And we want our students to do well academically, but we tell them at the very beginning that that's not the only thing they're here for, right? We want them to succeed in the classroom, but they also need to take advantage of everything else that's offered. Uh, Shamika mentioned the GCMC, which is the how we refer to our Graduate Career Management Center. Um, run, uh, they run a lot of seminars, uh, bring in their, a lot of the connections between the alumni um, and uh, the professionals in the fields. And so they're bringing them onto campus for lots of different uh, workshops, seminars, uh, creating coffee chats to give uh, students opportunities to talk with uh, alumni more personally. Um, and clubs and organizations are also an important part of what students do. You know, it's not just their homework. It's also making sure that they're getting to know other people on campus who share similar interests and people who have different interests. Um, we always tell them, you know, get to know your classmates. This intimate cohort experience uh, is very collaborative. Um, the students are very diverse and they often want different things. So they're not really fighting against each other to get the same jobs necessarily. So they tend to be really supportive of one another and work with each other. And uh, you never know if the, the person sitting next to you is going to be your boss next, you know, <laughs> be the source of your next job or someone that you hire uh, once you're back in, a, in an organization. So we really stress how all the different activities um, are interdependent. Shimiko, what are your classmates like and how would you describe the school's culture? I would say, um, as Professor said, you know, like um, they're very rooted to their tradition. Our cohort comes from a, a varied uh, background. As Professor said, we're, they're not just from financial services or they're not just from reputed backgrounds or they're, they're people who are from the entertainment area. There are people who have been doing bartending and are doing MBA in accountancy. And <laughs> so, you know, it's one of the most, um, it has somewhat 58, 60 credits and they're doing great. They've landed with their, there's one of my, uh, classmate who I know she's landed with a job and um, her experience when she was staying at job when they would throw you real life experience where you have to explain she had all bartending experiences but how how great would she you know um, try to immerse both of the real situations together and you know try to answer those questions it's, it's phenomenal so the great part is we understand each other's backgrounds we understand each other's struggles we understand where each person has come from why they thought of doing their MBA what their future as like you know perspective to this is so I think my cohort comes from a very background and that's one of the reasons why I like this uh, college and the program because when I read about the college, it did specifically mention culture, tradition, diversity, which was very important for me to feel included. So yes, I would say uh, it's been, uh, the, the cohort is great. Great, now Shamika, many people who will be watching this webinar live outside the United States. And mm -hmm. in fact, many will live in India. Yep. And I one question that they'll have immediately is, and this is always a concern uh, for candidates who come from outside the US but want to work in the US, mm -hmm. uh, the situation about visas. How, ha how have you navigated that process and how has the school helped you navigate it? Oh, sure. Um, so I am an international student from India. As I mentioned, I came over here in the August, fall of August, 2021. So, um, we have a dedicated um, part of the school that takes care of this. It's the ISSC, which deals with all the international students, their visas, the I-20s, everything. They're phenomenal. They take care of everything. They have their workshops. They have um, their webinars every now and then. I think it's monthly. It's um, every two months where, you know, they give us the updated criteria how the visas are working, what you should be up to date dated with. So yeah, being on an F1 visa could be challenging, but um, I think it's very streamlined uh, at the school. And I think whatever issues we ever face or whatever queries we ever have, we just directly um, book an appointment or just walk in to the ISSC, which is right in the next building, and we get all our answers. That's great. 
Uh, ISSC like is the International Student Services Center for anyone who might yeah. be wondering. <laughs> Thank you. Those acronyms are always <laughs> pro me, in fact, and I'm glad <laughs> you spelled that out for us. Helene, if you had to think about what the differentiating aspects of the MBA program at Baruch are, what would you say? I think uh, one is flexibility. Um, I think that in terms of our curriculum, in terms of our scheduling, uh, one unique feature of our, uh, you've heard a little bit about the scheduling, but one unique feature of the curriculum is that we don't have majors in the MBA. Um, we let students design their own majors depending on what they have been doing and what they want to do and how they can make up the difference. Uh, but we provide a lot of support to help them do that. They, as Shamika mentioned before, uh, an academic advisor who will help you pick out classes, help you, you know, sort of understand what your skill set already is and what you might need to develop given what it is you want to accomplish. Uh, we have career coaches in the Graduate Career Management Center who are also available to help our students figure out what the right classes, what the right skills are. And then we have faculty advisors who can help figure out the content uh, of specific classes and guide students towards the right a set of classes. So if you want to study, really do a deep dive into finance, you know, after you've taken the required classes, and then we've got a set of flexible classes. And when you take your electives, you want to study finance really intensively, you can do that. If you want to mix finance and technology, you can take some of each. So we provide a lot of flexibility, but also a lot of support to help students manage that flexibility. So I think that's one important uh, differentiator. And then the um, Second is something that uh, uh, Shamika mentioned before also is collaboration. Um, there's really a cooperative, collaborative spirit among the, yeah. the students in the cohort. Uh, they come from such varied backgrounds, both professionally and personally, um, but they learn to support each other. They really, because it's a small group, they really get to know each other well, become lifelong friends, become lifelong coworkers. Um, and colleagues, and they're really very supportive. And then the third thing is the um, the relevant, affordable, and academically rigorous curriculum, right? So, you know, we are faculty, are top notch, we bring in, because of where we're located, we bring lots of um, professionals from the field, they can come in and teach a class one night a week, uh, and then, you know, finish, go back to work uh, the next day very easily, just as our students can. So we've got, we bring in people that are at the top of their fields to come teach our students, you know, what's going on right now today. And I should point out that Baruch is really in the heart of New York. Uh, for those of, of you who know New York and want to pull a map out and look, it's at 24th and Lex. Uh, and that's equidistant between Midtown Rockefeller Center and Wall Street. Absolutely. Uh, great look really, uh, to explore the city from and to learn in. Uh, Shamika, I want you to look back at your experience. You will be graduating in a few months. And tell me, what are three things that really stood out for you? I think um, I would say um, uh, I'm just very uh, a completely transformed person, I think, right now, the day I came to what I am now. So I would, I would say transformation was the main thing. I would say another thing was, is, um, as Professor said, the college um, is not only really affordable, but is also provides scholarships. It provides various, um, on top of the affordability, they also provide a scholarships, which makes it even more, you know, valued for our um, efforts, academic and professional scholarships is what's it's called. So being the Zicklin uh, scholar is <laughs> the word they use. So I would say that um, given that opportunity, I would say that was great. And I think, um, the third, I would say, is um, innovation. I think um, the way I have learned to process and uh, understand and put things into place just by the experience of gaining like understanding from everyone, I think um, it has led to different thoughts, ideas, dimensions of how I think. So I would say that these are the three great um, aspects of the college that has, uh, I would take with me. What's your biggest piece of advice for people who are considering an MBA and might want to go to New York and be you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say um, just because I am an international student, uh, I would say that 
it is a struggle at first because um, things are changing a lot over here when it comes to um, the way you get your jobs and everything. So I think my target always has not only was just getting great grades, but also landing up with a great job. So I think the very first day I landed here, I was also doing my studies, but I was also applying to internships and jobs and looking for people, networking, going to coffee chats, just trying to catch hold of people, alumni who are working at great places, trying to just have a quick conversation over call with them and understanding how they lay through, and especially the international students who are, who are doing really great here. So I think, um, a very um, noble piece of advice, I would say, is um, this, this this city is so much to explore. I'm doing that too, but it's also very important to remember what for what purpose you're here. And I think I always keep that in mind that if I, I can explore the city, I can explore the country even more if I have a great job and um, I can pull over the expenses on my own. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a great balance to uh, have. So... That's that's one advice I would give everyone. Now, I, I think New York City is the center of the universe. <laughs> yes, of course. I totally agree. World, and I've been it's in awesome. all the great world, uh, from China to all these in Europe. <clears throat> but I but a lot of people would be um, intimidated or scared uh, by New York, not understanding <laughs> that New York is not this big, amorphous place. It's really a place of a lot of neighborhoods. And the people mm -hmm. in the neighborhoods in New York are very close to each other and they look out for each other in a yep. way that you may never expect. Did you experience that? Uh, yes, of course. Like I would say, um, I'm, I'm just like, you know, I have, a, uh, I have colleagues, I have now work people, I have um, my classmates. And that's the more experience I got from them is like, you know, they're very warm. They, they made me feel very comfortable they took me to different places and, you know, they're like, and I meet people, uh, you know, on, even on the streets, you know, they're like so good at, they're so warm, they're like welcoming and everything. I remember we went to this um, Macy's restaurant, Stella, where we met two old women who were themselves tourists over here, but they keep coming and going to New York City. As you said, you know, it's a very, it's a very lovely city. And, you know, they've made us feel so warm and they were telling us so many things and, you know, they, they were themselves tourists and they do keep coming here and going, you know, but that was one experience that was great. And then even it's a lovely neighborhood to have people over here are really warm and great. So for sure, I would say it can be intimidating at first, but it's also very important to understand where you're located, how people, you know, beside you are and just uh, being very cordial with each other, I think. Exactly. Helene, if people are interested in the program, uh, what do they do? Who should they reach out to? Of course, they can consult your website, um, but are there people on your admissions team that they should reach out for? Well, they should start by doing exactly what you said, uh, checking out our website and connecting to our admissions team. Um, They'll find a schedule of webinars that we do approximately monthly where they can start to get a lot of information. Um, I usually attend those webinars with someone from our admissions team. We have a student, Shamika's uh, represented us there sometimes, some, an alum as well from the program. So they're, they'll get a lot of information and opportunities also to ask questions. And something else they should look out for on their website is our Zicklin Graduate Ambassadors who are students who have volunteered to uh, be connections to prospective students, as well as to do other kinds of activities on campus to uh, uh, support their fellow students so they can have a meeting or a call or some sort of connection with the Zippin Graduate Ambassador. And they can find all that information out on our website. And that's a great way to really learn the program from the front lines, from someone Absolutely. who's experiencing yeah. it and it's your own age, and they're probably following a similar journey to yours. That's an ideal way to learn. And then, of course, visit the school. Sure. Sit, yeah. sit on a class. <laughs> Go for a so. beer with a student at a nearby <laughs> pub or bar. Yeah, uh, we offer some mini classes if you want to experience what a class is like. That's another I, opportunity you yeah. can find out from our admissions team. Yeah. 
I'm also the student ambassador. So I'm also on the portal that, you know, professor is saying where, you know, I get requests from international students and also other students where I answer their questions. I provide them important links and, you know, whatever concerns or questions they have. So I'm on that portal as well. So um, you can access our email IDs from there and um, you can always drop us. So, Shamika, for that. look, you've got a full time job at Morgan Stanley. You're a full time MBA student and you're an ambassador as well. Do you see yes. that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I do. For some hours, yes, I do. Uh, but it's totally about balancing uh, the life. And so I'm now all you this. have the energy. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I'm a extre- yeah, I'm an extremely ambitious woman and I like to help people I'm good at people and I think that it's the I think it's an experience and I would like to share that experience so I think that's also an important aspect it's important that people know what they're getting into it's just not about the city and the dreams and just being here it, there's so many aspects to this so I think that's one reason that I chose to be the ambassador as well because I really want to help people understand that you know Everything can be done. If I can do it, others can do it too. It's it's just about balancing and managing yourself. And we have a whole team of ambassadors. So if yes. people are interested in other perspectives, I mean, Shamika's got great experience that she can share, but I just want uh, others to know that there are yes. students who don't work full time that, that, or students that are in different industries or have or some domestic students, so or from far international students from other countries. So there's a whole uh, group that can share that kind of uh, experience. Yes, totally, totally. You know what's going on here. Helene is just trying to make sure that you're not inundated by thousands that's right. <laughs> of perspective <laughs> no, students. Yes. Because yes, that's exactly totally. what might happen now. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but uh, honestly, uh, the ambassador program and the panel that professor is saying we everyone doesn't get just I wouldn't get requests they're filtered depending on what questions they are so you know it's it's streamlined it's perfect and I'm sure it's 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 going to be great so not to worry for me <laughs> well Shamika and Helene it's been a real pleasure to spend this time with you thank you so much for bringing us inside the program and telling us all about it. I learned a bunch of things myself, which is rare, let me just tell you. Uh, <laughs> I've been around the block a few years uh, with uh, business education. And Shamika, good luck to you at Morgan Stanley. I'm sure you're going to be Thank a great you so much. when you uh, unleash you so yourself much. and you can work those 80 hour weeks and love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already loving it. All right. And for all of you out there, this is John Byrne with Posey Quant. You've been watching our Center Court webinar on Baruch's. MBA in New York City. Thanks for watching.